Welcome to Taburetum channel. This is my Ender 5 Pro with some mods that I've made over the last year. And today we will talk about these mods. We start with mod number one, a super simple thing, legs that are attached to my printer with squash balls that are rubber and that can amortize the whole thing so you get less vibration and the whole thing gets quieter the good add-on would be a huge slab of concrete that i don't have yet so it is what it is but it's definitely way less noisy than before adding these squash ball legs so here we have mod number two stepper dumpers for every stepper that's responsible for linear movement in my printer i have a stepper dumper which you can, which you can see here it's a piece of metal and rubber in between that basically separates the frame itself from the stepper so no vibrations are uh, getting transmitted which gives you less vibrations and less noise the thing that you can see here that if you move the stepper down by these few millimeters you will need to move the pulley on the shaft up so it's not that super easy right so you need to uh, take off the the belt and do a bit of the adjustments so i would call it a purely mechanical change medium difficulty here you can barely see mod number three which is super simple mechanical mod build plate, sub, build plate supports these are these plastic elements that help the build plate to stay flat they are connected to the rods back there and here to, to the plate basically if you are printing something heavy uh, the arm will be long if it's a big thing that it can basically bend the the build plate so these supports help to avoid that so this one is basically absolutely the best mod you can do you can see an original build plate here that has a hole over here that i've made printing something and i will show you the whole process of modification you take away this one and you install this one. This is a PEI build plate, by Creality original one, and this is an absolutely great thing. Things prints stick better, easier to remove, uh, very tough surface, hard to scratch. Basically, highly recommended. Probably the best, the easiest mod you can make. This is mod number five. I'd say medium difficulty, you need some mechanical skills and you need probably do some soldiering skills. And that's basically uh, adding a light. So here we have the first uh, cut where you can see as I turn it on that, yeah, we can see better our print, turning it off. And here you can see the lights themselves and turning it on you can see there are two led strips uh, mounted on a 3d printed base and as they are 12 volts and the power supply is 24 you need two strips connected in parallel mod number six easy mechanical moving the filament spool uh, away from the front of the printer you can see it back there on my very own designed by myself uh, spool holder um, and I like it that way because uh, I don't like to have the, this big spool in front of my printer so that's simple and well number seven medium difficulty but high difficulty in shooting that's why I'm shooting freehand Basically, this is a 
dual gear extruder which means that you have a grooved pulleys on both sides of your filament which basically limits the number of possible uh, grinds of filament to minimum and I like this extruder a lot. Mod number eight, I'd say a bit complex, is the BL Touch AutoBAT leveling sensor. You have to install it here with a custom mount that you need to 3D print and then you need to wire the whole thing to the motherboard, which is not that super easy, that I would say it's a rather a bit more complex from the others. And what it basically does, I will turn it on so you will see this needle going down. And what it what it does, it senses the distance from the uh, print head to the to the bed plate to enable auto leveling. So that's basically it. And the advantage, why do you want that, is that once you calibrate it properly, that then if you want to swap the build plate, for example, you want to print something on the glass to have the nice glossy surface, you just replace the build plate and the, it will auto calibrate the distance and it will still print fine. Mod number nine, medium difficulty, mechanical and a bit electronics. What you can see here, or you actually cannot see, is a different hot end. So this is the original reality hot end, and the visible difference is that you have this crappy push fit connector that you will end up having trouble with. And here you have a different push fit connector over here. But this is not the most important reason why I changed it. The most important reason is that this is a full metal, which means that the Bowden tube goes just a bit inside and then the filament moves um, through a channel that is in the alloy uh, hot end in the radiator. What it means is that you are not limited with the temperature by the PTFU, PTFE tube going uh, almost to the, to, to, to the nozzle. Uh, so you can use higher temperatures, which I do a lot. So that's the first advantage. And the second advantage is that you will get less problems with uh, the, bo the Bowden tube going out of the push feed connector that is that comes with the original hot end. Mod number 10 is definitely the most complex one. Pretty advanced thing, and it's barely visible here. Uh, not only because my prototype of my spool hanger is in the front, but because the differences are slightly visible. You see some different stuff on the on the LCD screen. Plus, you see the Raspberry Pi PC here, and the USB cable going to the motherboard in the printer. Plus, this cable going to the second motherboard that is added. So this mod is uh, running a Clipper firmware instead of a standard firm firmware that is Maldin based that comes with the Ender printer and the 5 printer. And basically what we are getting here is that the microcontroller unit, the MCU, is just doing some super basic stuff controlling the, the steppers and the uh, heater and, and, and stuff while the whole, all the complexity on the calculations, all the serious stuff is done on the software side on the Raspberry Pi. The biggest advantage uh, is twofold. First thing is that you can way easier configure things. So um, if you want to add a BL touch, auto leveling, whatever, different, uh, different screen, Additional MCU is just a matter of config, changing the config file because it's using a we are using a Linux on, on, on the on the Raspberry Pi. The second good thing is that you have a lot of compute compute power on the Raspberry Pi versus the microcontroller unit, so you can use some super advanced features like the uh, pressure advance or 
using some extra uh, vibration uh, l limiting methods that I haven't used yet, so I can't talk much about that yet. Yeah.